Secondly, have my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, have my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas. <laughs> By the conscious mass of Sri Guru Anuparanga. Yesterday, we were discussing how praying transcendental love is so counterintuitive. How you may imagine it to be is the opposite of that. And not only that, but when that love, that praying is in the heart of the devotee, it turns everything also upside down. It causes the viparayai, that means reversals. Especially 
When Prem develops Prem's Naya Man Panaya Rag up to the stage of Rag, then Rag even makes that experience, which would ordinarily be a cause of distress, turns it into a source of joy. So, Srila so, Rupa Goswami Pad is giving a beautiful example in Sri Uchwala Nilaman. She went to Giraj Govardhan. She was searching for Sri Krishna. And in the distance, she heard flute play. But she could not see where is he. She began to play up to the, up the slope of Govardhan. To come to such an altitude where she could look and see where is Krishna. At that time, it was the mm, Vrisharashi, Grishmakalik, Madhyam Surya. It was the hot summer season, it was the middle of the day, and the sun was in Brisharashi Taurus. So it was very hot. So in this verse, Lalita is looking at what Radhika is doing and tasting it. And what she's feeling, she cannot contain because Sakis, they always have to speak what is in their heart. So she's telling to her friend. Radhika, look and see. Radhika is standing on the slope of Govardhan Hill. And it's, the, that slope is covered with stones called Surya Kantamani. And they very much heat up in the sun. And they have sharp edges like swords. But still, Radhika is climbing on them and then joyfully gazing at Sri Krishna in the distance. She's gazing at Pasu. Pasu Benyuranandana. The sun, that means the prince of the cowards, the son of the king. So he is the prince of the Pashupa, the coward people. And Radhika is standing there completely motionless. She's not moving. As if she was standing with her feet on a bed made of blue lotuses. So these are the words of Lalita to her friend. So now we'll go inside. Inside the, the bar of these words. One may say, that when you're asleep and uh, mosquitoes are biting you while you're asleep, you don't notice. But then when you wake up in the morning, then oh, you feel the itching and you see the blood coming out from the bites. So can we say that because of the happiness of seeing Krishna, she's not feeling the pain. But then when Krishna disappears, then she will feel the pain. So the answer is no. Radhika is not like the person who wakes up who was eaten by the mosquitoes at night. Because by just by seeing Sri Krishna from head to toe, Radharani's whole body becomes cooler than a million moons. Therefore, it is simply not possible for the stones to burn her or for the sun to burn her. And another thing is that a piece of cotton cannot be damaged by a rock. If you take a pot and you throw it on the rocks, it will smash. But if you take a bowl of cotton and you throw it on sharp rocks, then nothing. So Radhika's lotus feet are so soft. Mm -hmm. Softer than cotton. So they cannot be defeated by the rocks. And another thing is that Yoga Maya is always alert in all pastimes to make sure that there are no discrepancies. To smooth out all the situations that no rasa bas or any problem can come in any way. Lalita Saki is saying, she's looking at Pashupendra Nanda, the son of the Indra, the king of the Pashupa, the protector of the cows. So here, she's saying this because the Braja Navayuvaraj, the young prince of Braja, he lifted Giraj Govardhan and he was a Pashupa, protected all the cows of Vrindavan by lifting Giraj Govardhan and giving them shelter. 
So, just as uh, when the person who will be the next king is selected to become the Yuvaraj, that is the prince regent, the prince in the king in waiting. So after Govardhan Lila, you know, the demigods did the Abhishek of Krishna, but then Nandamaraj did the Abhishek ceremony, the coronation of Krishna's Braja Nava Yuvaraj. So Yuvaraj should have a crown. But Krishna is such a hero. Only he could put on his crown. That was he lifted up Govardhan above his head like a crown. And he protected all the cows. Oh, he's my hero. And in this mood, Radharani is looking. The heat of separation has gone away. She became cool from head to toe. And the hot and sharp Surya Kantamani below her feet, they feel like a bed of blue lotus flowers. This is the Vilas of the Lila Shakti. But not only that, in addition to Radhika experiencing the happiness of beholding the beautiful face of her hero, there is also some concomitant incidental reactions. And that is, she's not moving even slightly. Just like Gopi say, Nirita Chitram Nivasam. When the Krishna plays his flute, then the cows, they become completely still, as if they are asleep. Usually cows are wandering around. If they're not wandering, then they... <laughs> but when Krishna plays his flute, they become... So Gopi said, Nidita. And then another Gopi said, Chitrami Vasa. No, they're not like sleep. They're just like a painting. There's a big difference. Why? Because when you sleep, you're still breathing. But when you go in samadhi, then breathing stops also in the yoga. Practice yoga samadhi. Uh -huh. So gopis notice they're such in such ecstasy, the cows are not even breathing. So they're like paintings, not like sleep. So actually gopis experience this. That's why they're telling you. So when Radhika sees the beauty of Krishna, she's not moving at all like a painting. And the dwani of that is, that in the happiness of seeing the beholding the beautiful face of Sri Krishna, she's completely forgotten her own body. She's completely forgotten her uh, associates. She's completely forgotten her Guru Jan Jatila Kutila. So in the condition that would give a duke suffering. Oh, it becomes a moment of great joy if it affords one the chance to be in contact with Krishna. This is the power of praying. So, now we're giving an example from Rasikum Uttans Goswami. He's saying, Pasyali Vishvagura Vasa Sambramam Brahmanti Dhavana Labhita Jetasa Tadatha Peiradi Kayasa Sambukam Mukam Kundasya Sukam Samikshate Oh, Saki, look, out of great fear of a forest fire, our Gurujan are making a commotion and running about here and there. But this dear Radhika is joyfully looking at the moonlight face of Shama Sundar. So the meaning is this. Perhaps you know, in the Purvara Gila, at the, at the end of Pau Ganga, at the end of Krishna's Boyhood is about to become a Kishore, so he's six years old. That is the time when the gopis who have in their childhood Samanya Prem, that is just a general type of love for Krishna, discover now they feel romantic feelings to see Krishna. So you should know that when there is a Prem, it causes many Anubhavs, reactions. So one Anubhav is called dancing. So when Krishna was caught in the coils of Kaliya, and the brat, all bridge buses came there and saw him. All the gopis came. And then Radhika came. And now, from the childhood, now she's about to, not yet, but the feelings of Kishore begin to appear in the, at the end of childhood. So now romantic love is coming in the heart of Radhika. So usually when demons attack Krishna, what does he do? He killed Radhika. He killed Shakatasu. He killed Trinavarta. He killed Agasur, Bakasur. Agasur, Bakasur. 
But when Radhika came, oh my Krishna. Когда Радика выбежала туда к озеру, with so much love, перепуганная за Кришну, Krishna was so ecstatic he couldn't do anything else but dance. Krishna, very artistically. Очень артистично. So Krishna's dancing is the anubhav, the reaction from Radhika's brain. Kaliya was lucky. He got Radharani's mercy. So then, Krishna came out from the water, came on the bank, and all bridge basses are because they thought he was going to die. But now it was if Krishna was born again, another life with him, and they embraced him. And they were so attached to see Krishna that no one wanted to go home. So they decided, let's camp here on the bank of the Jumna. So it was summer time. It was so, so even at night it's very hot. Mm -hmm. That's why the the cows had gone to drink the poisonous water of the lake of Kaliya, Rad. Because it was such a hot summer and the cows were so thirsty. In the first place to initiate that pastime. When the bridge basis, they camped there on the back of Jabudin. Some wicked demon sent by Kamsa Maharaj to kill Krishna came and lit a fire in the forest and everything was dry. So everything became they became surrounded by fire on all sides. There was a great panic. Everyone was filled with fear. They were shouting and running here and there. The seniors, Nanda Maharaj, Upananda, Abhinanda. So in the middle of all that chaos, in the middle of that terrifying time where everyone is threatened with imminent horrible death, then the brightness of the fire at night just illuminated Krishna's face in such a way Radhika had never seen. And Radhika said, how sweet he looks in the fire. <laughs> And she became so attracted by Krishna's dark beauty, illuminated by the red flames, that even though in front all the Guru Jana there, she cannot look at Krishna in the presence of all the seniors. But they were running around in the chaos. And Radhika was so absorbed in seeing this new beauty of Krishna, she forgot that they were all there. In the verse says, Swasan Mukam indicates that the in implication is that and Krishna was also looking at Radhika with a similar abundance of brain. So in this way, there is a Madhuratikrita Vipariya, a reversal where distress becomes joy due to the influence of Madhurati, <laughs> romantic love. Srinivadamtu Sakya Sukhameva Kamadya Sri Krishna Saundaya Sudhani Priya Aham Yatayu Hamaho Mahogra Mandana Nanda Pibrisham Nananda Once upon a time Adnashde There was a Gopi Saki who was very very dear to Sri Krishna and she was in the company of her friends and she saw in the distance something that made her burst out with joy. She could not contain her joy. She said, hey Sakis, listen, I want to tell you something unprecedentedly joyful. See, Krishna attracts the chitta of everyone. And just as you and I become delighted drinking the sweetness of the beauty of Sri Krishna in the same way, My sister-in-law, who is excessively frightening and extremely rasagya, that means ignorant of rasa, she is also becoming delighted looking at Krishna. So, she was seeing in the distance that her sister-in-law, who is very ferocious, usually the gopis, they have a bad relationship with their mother-in-law and sister-in-law. Because her sister-in-law was always watching them and thinking, yes, there's something strange going on in our family. This outsider is married into our family, but I think that she's not really committed. They're always looking to find some fault. So, the sister-in-laws are very scary. And they're ignorant of Madhurasa. Now, usually, if someone is your enemy, and then they become attracted to your to a female's hero, hero. then that heroine, seeing an inimical person becoming attracted to a hero, would be very sad. But it's the nature of this Braja Prem that when she sees her very ferocious sister in law also becoming mesmerized by the beauty of Krishna, she's so happy. No. So, in this way, the, that which would ordinarily become a cause of Duke, by the influence of this Braja Prem, becomes a source of great joy. In the port city, the haven of Prem, 
Asati becomes Sati. That means the, an unchaste, immoral woman becomes a chaste moral woman. So this is very important to understand. Even, especially understand first on the level of Tattva. And then on the level of Rasa. Tattva, Siddhanta, philosophy is a platform, foundation, upon which the Rasa Mahal, the palace of Rasa can be constructed. But, if the foundation is not strong, then you start to construct what will happen. The building will collapse. So Siddhanta is very important. Shanti roga trahantum samita patagamina krishnanu raga roga nasti sangama aushadam The meaning of the verse is this. There are many treaties, texts on Ayurvedic medicine, such as the Charak Samhita, and these treaties, like the Charak Samhita, they prescribe various remedies to eradicate diseases. So, the prescriptions of the Charak Samhita can remove every other disease except for the disease of Anurag for Krishna. There is only one Aushadi, medicinal herb, that can cure the disease of Krishna Anurag. What is that? In this material world, there is only one medicine that can cure the disease of material existence, Baba Rog. That is Satsanga, the association of pure devotees. Satsanga. Satsanga. But this Gopi is saying, the only medicine that can cure the disease of Krishna Anurag is Asatsanga. The Gopi is the only lekarstvo that can cure the disease of Krishna Anurag is Asatsanga. Especially Asati Sangha. Asati Sangha. Asati is the female. The female of the Asati Sangha. Asati. Asati Sangha. So this is the verse. Now, what is in the 20? Once, there was a, a gopi from outside of Brajmanda. And she was to be married to a gopa, a coward boy, in Nandagal. So, her parents gave a dowry to her husband, and the husband brought his new bride back uh, to his home in Braja. So the other gopis who were already there in Braja looked at her, and they saw this young lady is very respectful, is very beautiful, and she's ornamented with all desirable virtues. So then, obviously, they were thinking. Krishna would be very happy <laughs> with this new offering. <laughs> so because of their intense love for Krishna, they came to her and eagerly and repeatedly they were requesting her, oh please, be our friends, make friendship with us. <laughs> However, this new girl had heard certain rumors were going around. And she thought, I am from a good family. I don't want to associate with these Kalankinis. Those have a blemish on their reputation. <laughs> so, even though they requested her again, again she didn't want to be their friend. So, she neglected them. And those gopis also neglected her. Thinking, oh, she's a fake chaste wife. <laughs> hmm? This is fake chastity. So then, some days went by. And one day, that gopi, she was in her window. And see, Krishna was passing by. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Krishna glanced at her and the glance of Krishna was like an arrow. <laughs> if you are shot by an arrow, a doctor can come and give you the treatment to cure the wound. But no doctor can save you from a wounded heart from the arrow of Krishna's glance. And his beautiful form, how he stands, 
and crook it in three places. It was like a spear. If a spear is, the point has some shape like this, you know? The spear they make with a point on the end, but then two points coming back that way. So it can go in, but you can't pull it out. So because Krishna is going to fight it, when his form goes in, it won't come out. And also, if a fish is swimming, and then they go into a net, they cannot escape. So the curling hair of Krishna falling on his face was like a net. And her heart was now trapped like a fish in that net. Yes. Yes. So then she became full of a purvara. How does Krishna shoot his glance? If you want to shoot an arrow, then you need a bow. A bow is a, not fully straight, but almost straight. But then when you pull the bow, then the bow bends. The bow is curved, but then it becomes more curved, and then it goes back to its original position. And the arrow is shot. So in the same way, Krishna just raises his eyebrow. Krishna, the panyal brovi. That is so when his eyebrow is like a, a bow bending, and then straight it again, like this. So when he raises it, this. And now from this arrow she was feeling the heat of separation. Like a fever, she cannot move. She's trembling, perspiration. Her whole family think, oh, our new daughter-in-law has a fever. So they called the Ayurvedic doctors. Everyone came, they were giving different medicines and different potions and poultices, but this disease was so severe, all the medicines failed. Then the news spread, oh, this new girl who has come to Brad, she's so sick, no medicine is working, she may die. So then one of those gopis who had come, come and be our friend, and was neglected. When she heard this news, she understood everything. And she was very merciful. So then she went to the house, where that copy was lying on the bed. And she's whispering to her. This verse. Uh, this verse is whispering. <laughs> <laughs> there are many physicians who have shraddha, faith, in the Charak Samhita, yes. other Vedic remedies. <laughs> no, no, no. I have Vedic remedies. And those remedies, they are very good for other diseases, but not for this disease. For this, Maharog, great disease of Krishna Anurag. Mm -hmm. The Asati Sangha, the association of us unchaste girls, <laughs> <laughs> whose words you have disrespected, that Asati Sangha is only herbal medicine. So then, the Dwani is, previously you, would not, you disrespected my words, but now it's not too late, you should quickly accept them. We're giving you another chance to be our friend. <laughs> another example how the Krishna praying makes the asatitva satitva. It turns the immorality and Unchastity into real chastity. Keiki paksha drako yam alias yati chanchalam lochanam mochayati mam sati brata pisha jaha. One new gopi to Braja. So Krishna for the first time. And she experienced some emotions she never experienced before. And so she's speaking to her Saki. She said, O oh, Saki? O oh, Saki. Who is this person wearing a peacock feather? He does hair. He's extremely restless, sidelong glances. Krishna always pretends he's not looking at you. Krishna always pretends that he's not looking Kataksh. Kataksh is very important. He's also above. If a person is not feeling any emotion, like a Rishi, then the eyes are very steady. Obzor. <laughs> But when the heart has so many waves of sanctuary bars, then they go. Но когда в сердце бурлят разные эмоции, то глаза начинают бегать. That's why gopis are eyes are called the, like a kanjan pakshi wagtail birds. Поэтому глаза. Yeah, it's the anubhav, the reaction of the many waves of emotions. So then, if your eyes are always going from side to side, <laughs> you, you cannot look at anyone straight. <laughs> so she's saying, who is this person wearing a peacock feather? His restless sidelong glances are exercising the pisach, 
You know, if someone is haunted by a demon, then a tantric person can come who is a mantra tantra vidushi, very expert in magical spells. They can buy their mantra and tantra and yantras. They can expel the demon from your heart. And then, <laughs> because when you have a demon, then it's very, you are very miserable. And then when the demon goes, then you feel good. So she's saying, who is this person with the peacock feather in his hair, whose rest the sideline glances are exercising the demon of my chastity? <laughs> Here the pisach. Pisach is satitva. Usually, a young bride, she's very happy about her chastity and if it will be threatened then she becomes very disturbed. So the Dwani is that Krishna is so beautiful that that satitva that gives joy to a young woman she feels as it's like it's a demon driving her crazy. And see Krishna's sideline glance he is a mantra tanta vidush, very clever in mantra and tanta, and he is very mercifully exercising the demon of her chastity. That means she's ready to leave everything and meet with him in the forest. Yes. So in this way, <laughs> the prem of Raja makes the satitva, asit, asatitva and asatitva into satitva. No one should think that the adharma or the asatitva, the immorality, or the unchastity of gopis is actually immoral. So now come to the siddhanta. Otherwise, if you compare it to the worldly immorality, it will be a great disaster. offense. So, here is an example spoken by Narad Muni. Explaining that the sati, the satitva, the chastity of the worldly religious persons, in comparison, to the asati, the immorality of the gopis, their morality is immorality. So, perhaps you know that Narad Muni is always wandering here and there constantly throughout the universe, riding on the horse of the curse of, curse of Daksha Maharaj. That he's not riding a horse, he's poetry. <laughs> but Daksha Maharaj cursed him that he could yeah, and never stay in one place. In Kavya, we can say that Narad Muni is constantly traveling throughout the universe, riding on the horse of Daksha's curse to fulfill his vow. Yeah. What's the vow of Narad? He took a vow, we discussed in Asana, that he would remove the sins of all the people of the world through Kirtan and Harikata. So Narad is renowned for his supreme reverence and devotion towards the gopis of Vrindavan. The gopis are filled with a very secret and ever fresh love for Krishna, for which Narad Muni has the greatest reverence. So once Narad met a person who mm, was a dharmic, he believed in worldly dharma, but he was Bahimuk, he was Vimuk. That means he was averse to Krishna, he was averse to the transcendental world. And he didn't have a high opinion of Braja gopis. Uh, common. That persons who feel themselves to be very righteous, they look down on the gopis. Sita Devi is better. Oh, Lakshmi Narayana. Lakshmi, Narayana. Oh, the famous chaste ladies of this world, like Arundhati. Narayana met this person, and out of mercy, he is chastising him. He said, The gopis Anurag, deep, ever fresh love for Sri Krishna, is the. Mm, always produces in them a great anxiety and confusion by which they are perpetually beautified. Understand? Gopis are always in a quandary, always in a dilemma, always confused and in anxiety. And those bars, which are the bars of love for Krishna, make them more beautiful. It's like they are always confused and in stress. Rukmini, no? Yeah. But Braj Gopis, their confusion, their stress, their inner conflicts, everything. Make them, they decorate, they are the ornaments of Brajagopis, by which they are more beautiful than any other uh, consorts of the Lord. So, Narmoni said, Oh, how astonishing it is that in comparison with those gopis, the morality of the famous chaste ladies like Arundhati is actually adultery. So, who is Arundhati? 
Yes, yes. He's the wife of Vashishtha Rishi. So, Karnama Muni and Devahuti, uh, they had uh, nine daughters and she's the eighth one. So, Arundhati, that means... Karnama Muni and Devahuti, that means Kapil Dev, Supreme Lord's her brother. Not only that, uh, but she's the grandmother of Parasara Muni, which makes her... She's the great-grandmother of Srila Vyasadev. So, She's not only dedicated to her husband, but uh, her husband is one of the seven sages. He used to speak on Dharma. The seven sages used to sit in her class. So Arundhati is considered to be the peak of the uh, feminine uh, perfection. Fully devoted to her husband, fully fixed in all Dharmic principles. Narmun is expressing that the Uttam Bhaktas, the topmost devotees, in their opinion, they consider the gopis, who are criticized by general society, to be far more chaste than Arundhati. So Narayan is chastising that, that person, saying, the opinion of Mahabharata is completely different from your opinion. Why? Pachamo. Chaste ladies like Arundhati always apply themselves with attention and with respect in the service of their righteous husbands. And is they, have, they have strong faith in Dharma and the principles of Dharma described in the scriptures. So the scriptures say that the husband is a woman's best devata. So the wife should say, my husband is my devata, is my God, and fully be fully dedicated to him. All the men are saying, I, I so, the wife has to maintain Bhagavad Buddhi. Then, my husband is God. That's called Bhagavad Buddhi. Bhagavad Buddhi. So, this is why people in the West, very often, they find it difficult to understand Guru Tattva. Saksha, Dharitvena, Samastha, Bonshu, Shri Guru as God. They think it's extreme. But in Vedic culture, from your childhood, you see your mother as your God, your father as God, and then the wife sees husband as God. It's a common thing. But it's uh, taken and directed towards Sri Guru in the line of Bhakti. So, attempting to follow the injunctions of Shastra, a chaste lady, out of fear of falling and going down to hell, somehow or other artificially maintains Bhagavad Buddhi towards an ordinary jiva, who resides in a physical body made of five gross elements. So, by superimposition of Bhagavad Buddhi, over an ordinary jiva in a body of five elements, out of fear of going to hell, this is called the perfection of chastity. However, Narayan is saying the beautiful gopis of Vrindavan, as not artificially, not by buddhi intelligence, but they have spontaneous love for directly Parabrahma, and have abandoned all attachment for all the five gross elements or any material object. So, mm -hmm. Narayan is chastising that person. How can you think that Arundhati and the chaste ladies are great and cast aspersion on the Brajagopis? Brajagopis, their, uh, their asatitva is a million times more sati than the sati of the chaste ladies of this world. Because in Bhagavatam, Lord Kapiladev has said, Madguna Sutimatrena, it's very interesting because he's a Rangati's brother. Madguna Sutimatrena, Maisa Vaguhashe, Manogatira Vinchina, Yatagangamba Sambudo. Which means that just as the Ganges flows towards the ocean without any break, unbroken, uninterrupted. So, for a person whose mind is always flowing to me simply upon hearing about my qualities. Uh, then it's understood that their devotion, their bhakti is nirgun. Lakshana bhakti yoga sya nirgunasa udharita. Also, Rukmini in the 10th canto, chapter 60, verse 45, she says, Shasti Rakta Krimi Vidka Pupinta Bhatam Jivaks Chabhampajati Kanta Matevi Mudda. She wrote a letter to Krishna because he didn't want to be married to Shishupa. She said, Oh, Sri Krishna, this human body 
even during life is dead. If you saw dead body, you go, I see all bodies are dead. They only look like they're alive because they're being manipulated by the Divya Pran, controlled by the Divya. All human bodies are already dead. On the outside, they're covered by skin. And the beard, and the moustache, some hair. And the nails. But inside this decoration, there is only flesh, bones, мясо, кости, blood, кровь, parasites, parasites. <laughs> Everyone has so many parasites. Depending on what type of parasites you have, they control your mood. People have the proposed that actually the world is ruled by parasites because the presidents are ruling the world. Actually, themselves are controlled by the parasites, so the parasites are actually ruling the world. If someone changes their diet or medicine, then it will change the, uh, the demographics of what type of parasites they have and their behavior will change. Also. So she's saying inside this back of skin, there's a bones and blood and parasites and some urine and stool and the mucus, and bile, and the air. So Rukmini is saying, Jivaksha Vamba Jati Kanta Mate Vimudha And a stupid woman renders service to these things. Think, ah, this is my beloved. And Rukmini is saying, Yatei Padabda Makaranda Majigrati Sri and therefore, by this foolish attitude, that woman never, a jigrati, she never gets a chance to smell the makaranda, the fragrance of the nectar of your lotus feet. So in this way, and this by this verse, Narad Muni is establishing, though Dharma is relative to the sinful life of this world, is superior, but relative to the dharma of this world, <coughs> eh, then the love of the asatitya of Prajigopis is far, far superior. So, <laughs> in the realm of love, agarvatva, to be without pride is sagarvatva. To be with pride. That means to be near Abhiman. To have no Abhiman. Mm -hmm. Proud identity is to be full of Abhiman. Ma gavam udvaha kapolata talei chakasti Krishna swahasta likita navamanjariti andyapi kimna sakibhajam itrashinam vari na chetbhavati vepatu antaraya. This is verse from Srila Rupa Goswami Spadhyana. My dear Saki. My dear Saki. Don't, please don't become too proud that Krishna has decorated your forehead with beautiful paintings, leaves and manjaris, flower pots. It may be that Krishna is yet attracted to someone else. If the enemy of trembling has not made any obstacle. So here the meaning is, once one gopi had the chance to meet with Sri Krishna in a secluded place. They enjoyed a beautiful pastime, full of sweet laughter, and by their pastimes together, her cosmetics and various paintings in sandalwood paste and kasturi on her face and on her body, they became smudged here and there and washed away by perspiration. So then, Sri Krishna, being a Dilali Nayak, the hero is under the control of his hero. The heroine being controlling Krishna by her love and becoming very proud. Krishna began to repaint her decoration. She laid on the cheeks the makara. Makara is the, the fish, like a fish or a shark, which is on the flag of Cupid. In other places, he made vines here and there with fresh flower buds. Sri Krishna is Vaidakta Navataruna Parihasa Visharada, very expert in arts. So if someone will paint on your body, eh, then it may be nice. But if Krishna will do it, it's amazing. So now afterwards, that gopi had secretly met with Krishna. But afterwards, she was so proud that she was standing in such a way in, in a public place. Showing, trying to show off the paintings because she knew if other gopis saw these paintings, 
Krishna must have done it. They see me so me. she wanted to show her good fortune and minimize the other gopis. At some distance, Radhika was there with her sakis. So especially she wanted to вот show her new artwork that вот they would notice. Radhika and her sakis saw. And Lalita saw. So the other sakis didn't say anything, but Lalita could not control her style. Because uh, Lalita is a, has a prakara swabhav. That means... She is very strong speaker. Audacious and cutting, sharp, sharp words. But she's so intelligent. She will disguise her sharp words like a soft velvet cloth with a knife inside. <laughs> so Lalita told Radhika and I said, wait here, stay there. Lalita and she went and very <laughs> the smile came and sat down next to that. that Lalita. Gopi. Lalita. And actually Lalita is burning with Irsha, with jealousy. Asuya. Hostile, hostile mood towards that gopi. She said, Oh, Saki. Oh, Padroga. My dear friend. My dear Padroga. <laughs> Your cheeks are decorated with beautiful, fresh paintings of makara and uh, leaves and flower buds. Don't be proud. Hmm? Thinking. That there is no other beloved whom Krishna could would decorate like this. Why? Because. And, and then the little glance towards Radharani. Said, because you the painting is so perfect. It means that Krishna's hand was not trembling. Hmm? When <laughs> Krishna has, the fact that the painting is so perfect means two things. One, you are thinking it shows how, Krishna, how much Krishna loves you, but it actually shows that he does not love you so much. Only she said, don't be proud, thinking you are the only one who can be decorated. When the enemy of trembling did not appear. These are the words. But that gopi is hearing the dwani. And the dwani is that Krishna has so much love for my Sakhi. He cannot paint such good paintings like this. When he's painting, he's trembling. And the, the lines don't come perfectly. So you have no reason to be proud. Second thing. Also, it means that you yourself don't have so much love for Krishna. Because even if Krishna's hand is not trembling, but his hand is steady, but by the touch of his lotus hand, you are not trembling. You must be made of stone. Yeah. So also, my Saki knows about the glories of love. And because her heart is so gumbier, it's so deep. Only a person whose heart is deep can contain so much brain without it showing on the outside and not becoming proud. So my Saki being painted by Krishna, she would never sit in a public place showing. Because her heart is so gumbir, so deep, it can take, can contain the brain without it overflowing in the form of brain. Just, so just see how clever, how expert Lalita Saki. That in only one sentence, I can hide three insults. This. <laughs> At the same time. What are they? One, Krishna doesn't love you so much, otherwise he'd be trembling. You, you don't love him so much, otherwise you'd be trembling. Three, whatever love you have is not so deep, otherwise you would, you would not be come proud and it would not overflow on the outside in the form of pride. Pride. After speaking these sweet words to her, Saki, then Lalita got up and went back to Radharani feeling very satisfied. Lalita Saki ki! <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.